Good afternoon all. Um, I'm doing some power bank discharge tests, uh, the big power banks that have the inverter output, the mains output. But I want to know whether these energy meters agree with each other because I need to know whether I've got reasonable confidence that they're correct. Now this one works fine, but this one, which I haven't used for anything much for a while, doesn't do anything. The display doesn't come on. The overload light comes on. I don't quite know why the overload light comes on when there's no load, but no display. So what's wrong with this? Could it be something as simple as the internal battery's gone flat? Well, let's open it up and see what's going on. Now, interestingly, this one's got these tri-wing screws with sort of three blades. Yes, here's the screwdriver bit with its three wings. So let's give that a try. Oh yeah, easy peasy. This will be a part in no time. It's good when you have the proper tools, isn't it? Right, what have we got inside this very yellowed case? It's nice and white there, but this is terribly yellow and it doesn't even sit near the um, window. This is really nice. This um, part is just loose. And I think if I undo these screws, ah, oh, now there are there some buttons? Yeah, so there are probably some, um, oh, they're clicky. This thing should all come out and should be very accessible. Right, I've seen that on the display, no, the display's not there, it's here. You can see some numbers, but they're kind of very faint and reversed out. And also the LED here, which is clearly getting power, is connected, I followed the track, up to this chip here, which I believe is a microcontroller with a 32.768 kilohertz crystal on it. This one here is a special purpose energy monitoring chip, Cirrus Logic, I think it is. I've got a data sheet for that, I'll link to that. Uh, so the microcontroller must be getting power and booting up, but it's just not driving the display properly. So I'm kind of looking at physical stuff like is this zebra strip making a proper contact? And I've noticed that there's a little pip here, which is a molding pip um, on this surround, this piece here. And I think it was causing this to sit a bit high. So I'm just gonna try carving this down, carving off these, um, these molding errors and put the thing back together and try it again. That would make this not an electrical repair or an electronic repair, just a mechanical repair. Now, part of me hopes it is this easy to fix, and part of me was thinking, well, it'd be nice if it's something a bit more complicated, but I don't know. Also, why is that fault light coming on? Because that fault light, well, no, it's marked o OL, overload. So that should come out, that should come on if you put more than, I don't know, three kilowatts through this thing. So the microcontroller is definitely running Let's power it up and uh, see what it does now having redone that strip. Right, this is interesting. If I press this display in, I can see certain segments <laughs> lighting up. And I can see reflected, I don't know whether this will come out on camera, it probably won't. But that looks like it says 24.99 or something. I can see digits and segments will light up. so. Yeah, it's kind of electromechanical, I think. Now this rubber strip seems to be stuck on, but I can't imagine it's glued on. And I'm just wondering, there's a bit of a bow in it, and I wonder if it's set a bit too high or too low or something. So I'm just gonna peel that off. And I don't know, maybe turn it over and place it on again. And just try and find a new position for it, see if that works. So it's now the next day and Yesterday I just got totally bogged down, went down a rabbit hole, believing that the problem with this was mechanical, the zebra strip um, behind the LCD. And it's not, it's an electrical problem. So how do I know that? Well, when I was getting nowhere with the zebra strip yesterday, I thought, okay, the thing to do is to check the output from this five volt regulator. This is an HT7150. And uh, so I thought, how am I gonna look at the five volts on there? I don't really like playing with things that have mains on them. And so I thought, well, what's the main circuit here? How does this power supply section work? And it's essentially this, um, we've got live here and that 
acts as the ground line for all the circuitry. In fact, the three click switches here are all grounded um, to this point here, which is the live input. So everything is referenced to live. Um, the regulator follows, well, let's start at neutral, which is here. Now I think that goes through the big cap. It also has a resistor across it. Um, which will be a high value resistor, really just to discharge that cap. Then there's a resistor here, which is this large uh, brown, black, brown, which is 100 ohms. That then goes through a diode, and there are two diodes, so it looks like it's doing half wave rectification. That ends up at the regulator, so let's draw that in as a block referenced to ground. And as I say, that's a 715. Oh, so we should get five volts out of the back end of that. Now, rather than put mains into this thing through this dropper capacitor and dropper resistor, I thought, would it be possible to put something like 12 volts in at this point here? That'll go through a 100 ohm resistor, 101, through that diode, through the regulator, and then we can measure the output of that. So that's precisely what I did. I just shoved 12 volts in there. This resistor gives it a little bit of current limiting uh, and then check whether the 5 volts is on the output of that 7150. So let's do that now. And I did this in my usual way. Uh, ground on this 12 volt battery, positive. So ground goes to the live input, which is basically that mains pin there. And then I want to put my 12 volts in on the connection between the big capacitor, which is a 470 mic, uh, was it 0.47, yeah, 0 0.47 microfarads, and the resistor. Now, as luck would have it, that's uh, a through hole, so I can just clip that on there. And guess what? It all works. So the clock starts up. You can press the buttons and get watts, volts, amps. I'm not sure why that's 0.01 because it's measuring the volt, the small voltage across that current shunt. So that's probably just a calibration error. Uh, high watts, low watts, 56 hertz, which is slightly odd. Probably the, um, the energy monitor chip here is measuring the frequency across there. There isn't anything, so it's register, which is being read by the big microcontroller here, is just limited out at one direction. Oh, no, that wouldn't be the case because this says it can measure anywhere between 50 and 60 hertz. So, yeah, 56 hertz, that's a bit strange. And that's a cost thing. You've got um, pounds per kilowatt hour. So what you do is you set that. Uh, and I think when you set that, it writes it to that little serial E squared prom. I think that's what it's doing there. So you press that, I think, and then press that. Uh, how do you do this? Oh yeah, and then that counts down or up. So I'll set that to, I don't know, 16. And then you press that, and then that goes in there permanently. At So what that means is it costs 16p per kilowatt hour, uh, my electricity cost, and that's where it can give you a pounds cost on the display. I've also noticed that if you press and hold the function button for 10 seconds it just restarts the clock but the point about this is that by putting 12 volts in at that point this has started to work so it's fairly obvious what's wrong it's that capacitor there because if i inject dc in through here and i can measure the 5 volt output on that regulator in fact let's do that uh, so my ground reference can be the negative of my battery Positive is on the output of this reg. Oh, that's on that test point there, actually. And uh, there it is, 4.97 volts. So the point is the power supply is working. The, compo the only component that can be faulty now is that capacitor. So let's measure it. And uh, let's take the power off. Put this on capacitor. And, ooh, now that will be between... Yeah, this neutral pin here I believe and oh well actually uh, this point here so the so neutral and there 
and that's reading 56 nanofarads. Now this should be a 470 nanofarad, so immediately that's not reading right. It does have, as I say, a resistor across it, but then that's probably a high value. Let's see if we can see that. Right, to see that I'm going to have to take this board back out again. This board has been in and out more times than I care to count. Right, the resistor is sitting there under the big capacitor and it's brown, black, black, yellow. So four band, that's not 100k, that's actually one meg, isn't it? So I can't imagine that would upset the DMM's reading of this uh, capacitor too much. So yeah, this capacitor is no longer 470 nanofarads, it's 56 nanofarads. Now, do I have a class X mains capacitor? of that value to put in as a replacement to get this thing fixed. So yeah, I got totally distracted by this um, zebra strip thing. In fact, what I've done, you might be able to see it, I've put two pieces of cardboard in there, which just helped to push the zebra strip into a more of a, a straight shape. But clearly that's okay, because um, when you power this thing up with 12 volts DC, the uh, display comes on. So that ain't the problem. Well, I found this. Um, it's very, very old. I think it might work. It's not quite the right value. It's 220N, 250 volt. It is class X. There's an X2 just above the triangular logo there. It's Philips. It's a good brand. Um, yeah, 220N. That might be enough to get enough power into this circuit to power it up. It's only half the value of this one, which is 470N, but I think it's worth shoving that in and see if it works. Right, can I hoik this thing out? Yep, looks like I probably can. Get that end out. Okay, that's it. I'll suck these holes clear and put the new one in. I suppose it'd be worth just checking this on my capacitance setting on the meter Let's see what that says oh it's a bit low uh 200 nanofarads but yeah never know might work yeah let's put some solder on there and there lovely and now let's clip off the excess and there Okay, it's powered up, see if it works. So this blue one is slightly taller than this yellow one, but it does seem that the case goes back together. So I'll just put that on loosely and plug it in and see what happens. Right, here's some proper real mains straight out of the wall socket. Oh, that looks good. So clearly the 220 or 200 nanofarads um, that I measured is providing enough power. Now what would happen if you had the wrong capacitor in there? Do capacitors get hot when they're used in um, uh, capacitive droppers? I don't know. But uh, yeah, we've got zero watts. Oh, let me get my fan heater and see if I can pull some watts. Right, this is set to its one kilowatt mode. Oh yeah, that looks about right. 1050 watts. And we should have measurements for voltage, 241. Amps, 4.3, that's about right for a kilowatt. High watts, low watts. Ah, now that's interesting, that 56 hertz. It was showing that even when I, I wonder where it measures that. That's really interesting. That doesn't seem to be working because that should be 50 hertz. Uh, that was my setting, I'm gonna change that to how do you do it that's it 15 that's what i want so yeah 15p per kilowatt hour and we get the cumulative uh kilowatt hours so that's counting up i'm not going to burn anything am i and that should count up pounds as well um when we get to one penny's worth okay let's unplug the heater take this out of there so this doesn't have um yeah that's fine the one meg discharge resistor is doing its job 
Um, this doesn't have any sort of internal battery for remembering the values. Now, is that warm? Yeah, possibly mildly warm, but then of course you've got this resistor which may get warm. I can't feel if that's warm sitting right next to it, but that doesn't seem to be under any duress. Yeah, I think that's a perfectly good fix, even though it's not strictly the right value capacitor. So here's that Cirrus Logic uh, chip, the 5460A, and if we have a closer look at it, it's got a couple of resistors here. Wait for the focus to kick in. There we go. And they have two tracks running down either side of this big current shunt. There's a big piece of copper wire here, and that's directly across uh, the live coming in on the live pin there and the live going out. Oh, that's the live coming in. That one's the live going out to the appliance that's connected to this thing. So I would have thought, because this is going to be alternating um, at 50 hertz, that this chip could measure frequency, but it doesn't seem to have a frequency output register. So for the frequency um, function on the display there, have they fudged something from this power supply straight up into the microcontroller maybe? So I'm just looking at this um, CS5460A data sheet. This is the energy monitor chip that's in there. It's a Cirrus Logic uh, chip. And it says here that it measures uh, real energy, I times V. It also measures IRMS and VRMS. And it has a pulse output, um, which you can use to read the uh, wattage, I believe, or to energy. Well, I don't know. I would have thought that's power to pulse conversion, but anyway, they know best. Uh, it can also boot without a, an MCU, but in this application it has an MCU. But there's no mention in here of it having um, a register to read out the frequency. And that's the bit that's not working, having put that new capacitor in. So is that done a different way? Is that done by the microcontroller? Um, is there a link through from the power supply circuit directly into the microcontroller? Because this chip doesn't appear to have frequency measurement. It's a bit naff, isn't it? Why didn't they design this chip to measure frequency as well? It's got a, a clock reference, which is this 4 meg ceramic resonator, which is accurate enough to get a, an approximate frequency indication. It's just odd that you can't pull frequency out of that chip. So maybe the fact that this is not properly measuring frequency is down to this being the wrong capacitor. Now I can order a, a 470 nanofarad or 0.47 microfarad class X uh, capacitor. Let's just plug this in again and go back to frequency, which is, oh, I'm getting contact bounce now, which is there and that's clearly not right, 56 Hertz. Um, I didn't check it under load actually. Plug in my fan heater. No, nah, it doesn't make any difference. So it's definitely failing to measure frequency. And that could be because I put the wrong cap in. But, you know, that cap will do for now. And the measurements for power and uh, current and voltage should be correct. Shouldn't they? Because the regulator's got 5 or 4.98 volts on the output of it. So I think that should be fine. Now, one thing I wanted to check was power for this heater which is there, 105.5, 105.3, let's call it 105.3. Is that the same as my other power meter? 105.1, so yeah, they're in reasonably good agreement. I think this was about 105.5 or 105.4. Yeah, they're only a few watts out, so yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Cheerio.